Hey, um, what's all this about? We are rehearsing a play, my dear boy. A comedy, to be precise. An art form that has nearly vanished in these dark times. Ah, huh, I see. So did you write this play? <laughs> I wish I did. But no, it's The Merchant of Venice by William Shakespeare, a classic of theatre. Classic? How old is it? Almost half a millennium. That is why we must not forget it. It's a crucial part of our cultural history. Would you care to join our little theatre group? Join? No, no. I was just curious. <laughs> I love it when you youngins get curious. Listen, if you want to know more, go find Albert. He's on a mission to collect all the works of classical literature. His endeavours would surely satiate your curiosity. And then some. Sounds interesting. Where can I find him? He set up a modest library in the Peacekeeper's ship, has stockpiled lots of books so far, and he's on a constant search for more. So even if books themselves don't capture your imagination, you can still make a pretty penny there. I heard about you. Why don't you join the PK? Yes, you. Come here. I need to talk to you. I'm Albert, and from what I hear, you're Aiden. You have quite the reputation, my boy, for being fearless, for boldly crisscrossing the city at night, as if it were broad daylight. <laughs> you believe all that? At first, I didn't believe, because a pilgrim's always a guy with some kind of dark past. A bandit, a rebel, an outcast. But from what they say about you... I'm sure whatever you've heard is an exaggeration. Nonsense, my boy. I have something you probably don't come across all that much. Faith. Faith in you. I'd be careful with that. It's no time to be careful, my boy. I believe that your strength, determination, and courage are just what you need to retrieve priceless treasures before they are lost forever. Before mankind is plunged irrevocably into the intellectual and philosophical dark ages. So, your books, then? This isn't about dime store paperbacks, boy. I'm talking about the greatest works of literature ever created through the eons of human existence. The greatest thought pieces, philosophical treatises, works of romance, drama, and horror. All of which serve to illuminate and uplift humanity itself. Losing such a heritage would reduce us to cavemen, with no better way to express ourselves than through savage grunts as we scratch crude figures on walls. <laughs> sure. How can I help? Work with me, please, to find and secure these treasures. I've been researching the local private book collections. If I'm right, many priceless volumes may be found all around the city. Of course, many of the dwellings are now infested by these horrible creatures of the night. That's where you come in. Here, take this list. Each title on it corresponds to one of the many facets of humanity. Fail to save them, and the diamond of mankind will dull and shatter like cheap glass. Remember, we are not simply creatures of flesh and blood, but also of mind and ideas. I am charging you with the salvation of the very spirit of man. Right. I'm off then. Here are your books. Not my books, dear boy. Our books. Humanity's books. 
The world is collectively sighing right now due to your efforts, and it doesn't even know why. This tale, your tale, will be the next great epic, and it's only begun. Ah, the Bible. I mean, well, that's like the book, right? Few books have shaped the world as profoundly as the Bible. Hmm, Hans Christian Andersen and his fairy tales. Powerful stories of virtue and resilience. Children's tales, yes, but containing wisdom for all. You have just rescued the collective unconscious of the Western world. Thanks to you, the fire in the belly of humanity burns brighter today. Let's stoke it more, shall we? Thalia there is my associate. She helps me track the collections around the city. She will point you to the next locations as I catalog the books you bring me. Hi, Aiden. I'm Thalia. So, you're the pilgrim Albert told me is helping us rebuild humanity's library. I am. Albert's a wonderful man. I only hope others will appreciate what he's trying to do. We're not in the middle of the Renaissance, you know. Few people read. What about you? What about me? Do you read? Uh, when I can. Not often. Then tell me what you think. Between the Bible and Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, which would you consider a better guide to human behavior? Uh, it depends on who you are. And what you need to get by, doesn't it? Thoughtfully answered. Seems there's more to you than meets the eye. And what meets the eye is pleasing enough. You're a breath of fresh air, Aiden. We must talk again next time you bring back books for Albert. Speaking of which, here are the locations of more books. them. My research was spot on. Here, we have the complete works of William Shakespeare. His stories are some of the most often retold and adapted in history. So universal were his themes. His tragedies were the most popular. Hmm. Are we humans drawn to tragedy? Hmm. Something to reflect upon. The Arabian Nights. Originally, 1001 Nights. A seminal collection of stories, folk tales, and songs that span a continent over several centuries. It is a melting pot of literature, sometimes fantastical, often violent. Not unlike life in our own city, more monumental achievements secured from destruction. <laughs> Let's keep at it. I believe Thalia already has readied a new list. Hello, Aiden. I see you've brought back a collection of Shakespeare's works for Albert. Are you familiar with Romeo and Juliet? I guess. Tell me, do you believe in love? I mean, true love. The faded love of which Shakespeare wrote. I'd like to think so. I just haven't seen a lot of it in my life. It's true. Even simple affection seems in scarce supply these days. But the hope... It's the hope that can make it possible. If not now, then later. As the fates decree. Speaking to you, Aiden, has once again been a revelation. I look forward to your next visit. It's a welcome break for me. For you too, I hope. Here's a new list. Watch out for yourself. Hmm. 
More of humanity's legacy restored and protected. The Bhagavad Gita is the controversial Krishna Bible. The warrior god Krishna tells us that he is responsible for our actions. We are a part of him, extensions of his thoughts and desires. It challenges the concept of free will and personal responsibility. Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto is one of the most influential political documents of all time. I wonder what he would say about class struggles in our own day and age, and unique circumstances. Thank you for these, Aiden. I'm afraid we haven't found any new noteworthy collections for you yet, but keep an open channel. I will radio you the moment we have it. I have to say, Aiden, I haven't seen Albert this happy in forever. Thank you for what you're doing. Here's a list for your next book search. I've enjoyed our talks, but I tend to hog the conversation. Are there any questions you'd like to ask me? Well, actually, I am curious about something. Wonderful. What would you like to know? I get that you're romantic, but are you into subjects like science? An interesting question. Hopefully my answer will be worthy of it. You ask, though, as if they are entirely different ends of the spectrum. But to me, they are parallel notions. Whether it's science or romance, answers to questions are often best guesses based on what can be observed. With a different perspective, the same information leads to a different answer. For example, the sun was once a fiery god that, with better observational tools, was revealed to be but a fiery ball of gas. How do you feel about science? Especially given its role in our current mess. That sucks if you ask me. It doesn't look like technology has done us much good. We're fucked. And we're gonna stay fucked because of these mad scientists. Language, Aiden. I appreciate your passion, but please... I'm sorry, Thalia. I think it's best you go now. I have to return to my work anyway. Sure thing. Hope to see you next time. If I'm not too busy. You're a miracle worker. You found them, then brought them back safely. Oh, ho, ho, ho. here now is one of the original great American novels, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Mark Twain was a wry observer of the human condition and a sharp-witted satirist. What would his take on the divisions of our society be, I wonder? Here we have what is known as the Written Torah, an introduction, if you will, to the origin story of the Jewish people. And part of the larger concept of the Torah that includes all their teachings, culture, and practice. A crucial tome of religion and culture. Our collection is growing by leaps and bounds. <laughs> Primarily due to your leaping and bounding. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> you are a stoic, aren't you? Damn, <laughs> thought you'd have a... Better sense of humor than Thalia. <laughs> oh well. Aiden, it's such a wonderful day. Let's dispense with all this dreary philosophizing, shall we? <laughs> okay. I see you brought back the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Tell me, Aiden. As a pilgrim, are you an adventurer like Huckleberry Finn? A 
Pilgrim doesn't have the luxury of adventure, Thalia. I didn't mean anything by it, Aiden. I, I just thought... I thought what? That the real world is the same as some lazy adventure novel? I'm sorry, Aiden. That was insensitive of me. Yeah, I guess it's all you know. Surrounded by books all the time. Me? I grew up surrounded by you. Much more dangerous things. Of course, Aiden. Well... Goodbye for now. Hopefully we'll be more in sync next time. Every day out there was an adventure, I can tell you that. Not always a pleasant one, though. There was plenty of unpleasantness in Huckleberry Finn. In that case, call me Huck. And I'll be your Mary Jane. Tell me, Aiden. Do you have a thing for older women like Huck did? Excuse me? Never mind. I am just glad you've retained your sense of humor in the face of this world's darkness. And don't ever think I take for granted the danger you surely encounter every day. Mm, the danger's out there, Thalia. Here with you. No reason not to relax. That's how I feel when you're around, Aiden. Thank you for that. I'll anxiously await your return. Before you go. through the door with more books. Let me see. Let me see. Hardly. Franz Kafka might have thrived in our city. He wrote tales that blended realism and fantasy, creating surreal environments and scenarios. Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> the metamorphosis was all about a hideous transformation. Yes, <laughs> he might have provided some brilliant insight into our current situation. Yes, you have preserved poetry. That's just what the city needs. Particularly the work of Pindar and his victory odes. They celebrate the triumphs of ancient athletes. And what is life today but a contest simply to survive? He was a firm believer in what man can achieve by the grace of the gods. Gods or no, I share his faith. I spoke about faith when we first met. Not only was that faith justified, you've now given me hope. Aiden. I've barely been able to focus, waiting for you to return. I see you brought Kafka's Metamorphosis. Albert's been after that particular book for a while. I'm sure Albert wax poetic about the theme of transformation and its parallels to the state of our world. A lot of wax, actually. <laughs> Two earfuls, at least. <laughs> That's Albert. But I'm curious what you think. Is the protagonist's transformation into a giant cockroach an apt parallel for what's going on in our world? Uh, more or less. He turned into a roach. People can turn into... Infected. True. But Kafka's story was as much about feelings of alienation and isolation. <laughs> Not just turning into a monster. Yeah. I <laughs> suppose you're right. I, I hadn't really thought of it that way. I see. I guess I was expecting more of your stealth insight. Uh, next time? I have to admit, Aiden. I was attracted to you when I first laid eyes on you. Physically, that's still true. And I do enjoy our talks. But honestly, it's not enough. Not yet. But there's still time. If it matters to you, I hope it does. See you next time. Hey, don't tell Albert, but it doesn't really work for me. Oh? How so? And turn me into a roach any day over becoming an infected. I agree. I'm more apt to compare our world to Kafka's The Trial. 
we're all stuck in a maze of increasing danger and absurdity. There are authorities, but no accountability. No way to truly solve any problems. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Do you know? This might be a little out of turn, Aiden, but... I don't think I've ever been so aroused by a discussion of nihilism. I have to confess, Aiden. I was attracted to you the moment I laid eyes on you. So, if I come off a little thirsty, well, I am. But it's your mind, Aiden. You constantly surprise and delight me. You have a devastating combination of mind and body. I've said too much. I hope I didn't just drive you away. Please, Aiden, come back soon. Hey, what are you doing here? None of your business. What do you want? I'm just looking for a book, not for any trouble. You see books, we see toilet paper. Find another library. I just came from one, and I can't let you rip those books to shreds. Can't let us? <laughs> Please. Get him, boys. Let's pick his corpse clean. I see you now. You're mine, bitch. Now watch this, motherfucker! You're done. That's not gonna be good. <laughs> More great works recovered. Your dedication to this is moving. <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. Jonathan Swift was a brilliant satirist. Here he had a go at human nature and the Traveler's Tales subgenre. <laughs> Magnificent. I fear our world has lost the ability to appreciate the subtlety of satire. But when it can again, this book will be here, thanks to you. Our library is growing, Aiden. Not just in the number of books, but in the amount of knowledge, wisdom, history, and more. We need to keep it growing, Aiden. Uh, but first, let us find some more collections for you. Stay on the line. New book location just discovered, Aiden. Are you available now? Drop by. You're self-confident. That much is obvious. But do you believe in anything outside of yourself? Bigger than yourself? No, I'll believe what you believe. You will? You have a positive attitude. Can't go wrong with agreeing with you. <laughs> Don't you patronize me, Aiden. I thought we had a better understanding of each other than that. I'm sorry, I thought that's what you wanted to hear. I'd like to think so, but the world doesn't make believing very easy. Agreed. But we have to hope that all this suffering isn't for nothing. It'd be way fucked up if this was all for nothing. I see you're conflicted about this. But not despairing. That's something. I just don't want to see life as a constant struggle for nothing, I guess. I see. Thank you for sharing this with me. Oh, here. I have to go, but I have to tell you something first. What's that? But I know I don't always have the right words, but I do enjoy our talks. I'm glad. 
I do too. See you again. Soon, I hope. Done it again, Aiden. As I expected you would. <laughs> what have you brought? H.G. Wells was a master of science fiction, in part because he knew his science. It wasn't humanity that prevailed over the Martians, but germs. <laughs> germs, man! Can you believe it? <laughs> so simple, yet so small. Would that our plight were suddenly resolved in that way. Kipling's The Jungle Book has an underlying theme of abandonment, followed by themes of adoption and nurturing. Oh, how so many today feel abandonment. Hopefully, nurturing souls remain. What am I saying? Of course they do. You are one such soul. It's beautiful, Aiden. This collection, it's... <laughs> I know, I know you think me a fool. But I am moved. Thank you for this gift. This gift to me. This gift to the world. There you are, dear Aiden. I've missed you. Likewise, Thalia. Albert seems pleased with today's haul. H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds, huh? You know, every day I wonder, are we at war? Well, who, us? Wait, did I say something wrong? Oh, Aiden, that was so cute. No, no, we're good. I was referring to the world around us. Is that in a state of war? Oh, right. The world. Nah, you can't be at war with animals. You're talking about the infected? Yeah, they're basically just rabid animals. All you have to do is not let them get you. <laughs> and that's not war. I suppose, but I guess I was thinking of the bigger picture. <laughs> the infected don't exist in a vacuum. I suppose. Oh, we're at war all right, believe me. And not just one, a lot. Everyone seems to be at each other's throats for one reason or another. Sounds like you're talking about the infected. Some days it's hard to tell who's more dangerous. The infected, the regular people. How distressing, Aiden. But quite an insight. Here's what you need. Till next time? Yeah, till next time, Thalia. Continually astounded by your tenacity and success. Let's see today's catch. Ah, Lewis Carroll truly captured the surreal feeling of disorientation, of falling into a strange world in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I often feel like I've fallen into another world, but sadly, this one is no Wonderland. Given the nature of H.P. Lovecraft's horrific creations, I suppose we should count ourselves lucky. What would we do if an old god suddenly awoke? Lovecraft excelled at creating a sense of dread, which made his stories all the more horrifying. I can relate to a persistent feeling of dread. Definitely. Thanks to you, 
This collection is already unparalleled in the city. Sadly, our sources are getting dry, and I have nothing new for you right now. But I am confident we will manage to dig up at least some more from the city. Just you watch. Wait for my call, Aiden. Aiden, I have a fresh list of book locations for you. Was that Alice's Adventures in Wonderland you brought back? Do you consider the library your Wonderland now? I don't know about that, but it's a definite change of pace. I bet. I would imagine, like Alice's journeys, yours are disorienting. And you're probably surrounded by no small amount of madness. You seem immune to such afflictions. Seem, I say. But... But are you really, Aiden? Do you ever get close to losing it? Of course. I mean, we all have our moments, right? I know I do. Sometimes it's all I can do not to fling myself off the nearest balcony. I do that all the time. It's... it's kind of my job. But yeah, I get down sometimes. And I just get over it. Well, I, I let myself feel bad, but I can't afford to wallow either. Stifling your feelings can be dangerous too, Aiden. Yeah, maybe. But that's just how I'm wired. And I'm off. See you next time. <laughs> I'll be counting the hours. them. It's incredible. Let, let's see. No one wrote adventure like Jules Verne. Around the world in 80 days. Journey to the center of the earth. And of course, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Did you know that in the Nautilus, he predicted many features of modern submarines? <laughs> A man ahead of his time. You'll be interested to know that in Plato's Republic, Socrates argues in defense of the connection between a just life and a happy life. Ah, if only such a sentiment could break through the cracks of our society and flower once more. You know, Aiden, I truly believe you deserve to be immortalized for your efforts to preserve the precious resource of human literature. I truly do. As probably does Thalia. Go ask her. Ah, if it isn't my intellectual sparring partner. I see you brought Albert a copy of Plato's Republic. Heady stuff. I haven't read it, but Albert was sure excited. If it has pages, Albert's excited. But here's a question. If you had to make a choice, would you choose to be just or to be happy? Neither. No, you have to choose one or the other. I know what you're getting at, but it's not a real choice. How so? Because one man's justice usually results in another man's misery. I see it all the time. And you can't really choose to be happy if you're surrounded by shit. Then you're just deluded. Me, I try my best and hope for the best. And I leave it at that. I'm speechless, Aiden. Oh, that's okay. Who says we need to talk to enjoy being with each other? Albert's shelves are nearly full. I suppose you'll stop visiting soon. We'll just have to see about that. Well, at least there's one more location to check. March 21st. 
here you are. This'll make Albert happy. You! Give us that book. Why, this book? What's it to you? Because it contains a treasure map. Uh, look, I think you're confused. It's called Treasure Island, and it may show a picture of a treasure map, but it's not real. That's not what we hear. Now hand it over. It's not gonna happen. Then we'll take it from you. We're good at that. Plunder them, boys. A treasure in Treasure Island. <laughs> Idiots. Wait, what's this? Looks like a um, safe combination. I'll be damned. Who has a treasure map? Well, of sorts. Luckily, the book is the only treasure Albert's looking for. More books. I may have to start calling you Santa. It's like Christmas every time you return. Almost everything you think you know about pirates comes from Robert Louis Stevenson's book, Treasure Island. But did you know it was originally meant as a coming-of-age story? Indeed. And even though it was for children, many pirate movies, when there were movies, were rated R. Duh, you, sir, are a tough audience. Darwin's Origin of the Species is the foundation of evolutionary biology. It's ironic, really. Is what's happening around us somehow an expression of Darwin's natural selection? Unnatural selection, if you ask me. You did it, Aiden. Our work here is done for now. I am humbled. Truly, I am. Humanity has a chance to survive, not just in body, but in spirit. Because of you. Take this. It is but a pittance for all your great works, but it may serve you in your daily adventures. Thank you, Albert. But I'm curious. What do you do now that your collection's complete? Hmm. With our literary past safeguarded, there is only one thing to do, my boy. What's that? Secure the future, of course. Ensure the human spirit continues to be distilled for ages to come. So, write more books? Precisely. Starting with a record of your heroic deeds that brought us to this moment. <laughs> Who'd want to read about me? After I've told your tale, my boy, everyone. Oh, and it will be epic. And I already have a title. Libros Libertad. Nice. Now leave me, for I must begin. Thank you again, Aiden. We are all in your debt. Oh, and check up on Thalia. She wanted to talk to you. 
Keep well, Albert. Of the books you brought, On the Origin of Species and Treasure Island caught my eye. And probably inspired a question. Indeed. So, how do you view yourself? Are you a pioneer like Darwin? Or a pirate like those found in Treasure Island? I don't know. Don't know enough about either to choose. Fair enough. I'm glad to hear you're not so self-absorbed. But... There's nothing wrong with a little role-play that leads to a bit of self-examination. I wonder if you're capable of that. On that note, it looks like I finished my work with Albert. Oh, so it means you won't be coming back? Yeah, I mean... As hard as it is to admit it, at least a part of me is really sad to hear it. The feelings I've read about, that's nothing compared to what I feel. I'll miss our conversations. Yeah, me too, Thalia. Do you think it's possible that I could see you again? Very possible. You can visit me at home, if you want. I've marked my flat on your map. I'll be there after the sunset. Okay. See you there. Till then, Aiden. It's Aiden. Come in. We have a nice place. Thanks. At least here you can pretend that this whole nightmare isn't happening outside. You know, I had a dream. What dream? That one morning, I, I went outside. There were people on the streets, kids playing, people in the cafes, like in the books I read. <sighs> Crazy, right? I think we all share that dream. Do you think if this world were different, would you get married? Build a house? That seems unlikely. It's so detached from what my life is. My everyday life is in my imagination. In literature. I'm probably just a weak little girl to you. No. You're sensitive, but that doesn't mean you're weak. Those who are weak just give up. They stop caring about anything, give up on life, but you... You still care. It means you still fight. Someone told me once that only the gentle are ever really strong. Will you hold me? Aiden, can we pretend that what's outside isn't happening just this one time? The world out there is still there. You're forgetting about it changes nothing. Oh, Aiden, but it does. It changes everything. Maybe not out there, but here. Here we can make our own decisions. Decide what is and isn't real. Sometimes what's outside makes us forget what it can be like in here. And sometimes it's just an excuse. Because we're afraid of what's in here, too. I'm not sure I understand. I know. Don't worry. Good luck, Aiden. Good luck with everything that's out there. All right, Thalia. Just this one time. Were you just gonna slip out? Well, no, I, it's just that, you know. Monsters to fight, people to save. I've read those books. I'll, um, I'll see you later. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. We both know the world we live in, after all. Didn't you say yours was the world of imagination? But not delusions. I'm glad this dream has come true. Likewise. I know. Goodbye, Aiden. <laughs>